I mentioned a number of times in the last episode how baffling the start to the season was, just how well we were doing in the Premier League. But I had a little voice in the back of my head that was telling me, Stu, it ain't going to last. It's all going to go wrong. You're going to fall down the table. And to a degree, yeah, yeah that's exactly what's happened. Hello there and welcome to episode 4 of Let's Go Villa. I'm Stu, thank you for joining me in today's video where we are going to be playing against West Ham United and Wolverhampton Wanderers in the Premier League. I'm going to hopefully take a step closer to European qualification. That sounds great to me. Hopefully it does to you. If it does, please leave a like on the video and subscribe so you never miss any lovely FM content from yours truly. Uh, since you were last with us, we've played a lot of football games. A lot of them. So the last time we saw you was around this area, Man City and Leicester. Two games back-to-back -back that weren't very good. String of three games without a win there. We did then go on to beat Leeds United, but then we've definitely leveled out in this season. We had a great start, but we've definitely balanced out now. A horrific December compared to what the first half of the season was like. Only two wins in that, the entire period there. A bunch of draws and a couple of losses. One of them in the cup, so it is what it is. We recovered a bit in January. As you can see, Bournemouth, Middlesbrough, Brighton, Everton. A nice run of games. We did lose against Everton, which was a bit frustrating. In the 95th minute as well, that one stung. I have to say, that one did sting. And then beat Bradford City in the FA Cup. We beat Chelsea 4-1, which was magical. And then we have struggled against Crystal Palace in the last game. Annoyingly... Chelsea and Crystal Palace near the bottom of the table. Chelsea are in 16th. Crystal Palace were bottom, so not ideal. And that does leave us going into West Ham and Wolves. Licking our wounds a little bit. Now, you will notice as well, we've been pretty consistent since the start of the season using the 4-4-2. Once or twice, we have switched to the one with the wing-backs. We have switched to a 4-2-3-1. And the reason we've done that is because we've had a few new transfers in. And we've also sold a couple of players as well. We'll look at the sales first. Morgan Sanson and Marvellous Nakamba have both left for 9.5 million and 13 million respectively. Sanson gone to Real Batiste and Nakamba on deadline day went to Celta Vigo. Now, we've only spent a little bit of that money. Now, I know you're looking over here already. I know what you're doing. I know that doesn't add up. Bear with me. I will explain. All of that money for these two was up front. Over here, Sander Burge, 10, 11, 12 million pounds, something like that was what we actually spent. The rest of it is on installments. And I know we've got a lot of transfer debt, but Sander Burge, let's talk about him straight away. Brought him in as defensive cover. He's obviously the replacement for Marvellous Nakamba. I think he's an upgrade. He's strong. He's tall. He's got a decent tackle on him. Steady. Uh, his passing's okay. His vision's okay. And he's got room to grow. He could be a four-star player. I think he could be absolutely superb for us. He was playing well above the level he should have been in um, in uh, Sheffield United in the Championship. He's a Premier League player. We've brought him back to the Premier League. We've had to pay the money for him. But I think he looks the business. I also think he's got a release clause, which is worth a decent chunk of money. That's not the button I wanted to click on, Stu. Learn how to use the buttons. My word. Uh, contract info. That's the one. He has got a release clause. I'm sure he does. Yeah. £51 million for Champions League clubs. I don't really want to see him go. However, if we had to let him go because of that release clause, we're making a profit on him, which will make the club happy. And also, it's a hell of a lot of money to bring in as well. And we could bring someone in of his quality, probably for a bit cheaper in the, the summer as well, if it's in the summer. Uh, we've also brought in Cole Palmer and Jeremy Bogger. Now, Jeremy Bogger is obviously £2.5 million. Pounds. Cole Palmer is in as a loan. Brian Gill is back at Spurs. He wasn't playing well for us. We decided to let him go. He's gone back to the club. There's no point hanging around with him if he wasn't going to be doing anything for us. So we've brought in Cole Palmer as a direct replacement, and I think he's going to be much better. He's already played well for us, actually, so far. Scored a goal in his first three appearances. Very happy with that. Only in for this season. I'd like to get him in for next season as well, but he's looked all right so far. Uh, Jeremy Bogger is a signing that has allowed us to move to the 4-2-3-1, or at least a system with wingers. And he's not been very good so far, I will admit. But we only paid two and a half million pounds for him. I'm not too upset if we end up selling him on. I mean, looking at his value, we'll sell him on for a profit. That'll make the board happy. I'll be okay with that. But because we've only spent about 13, 14, maybe 15 million, the balance actually isn't as bad as it was. Now, the board did put some money in to get us over the financial fair play issue. Because there was going to be an issue with it. So, the board have put money in. We've made two transfers. We've spent the money of one of those transfers. We've still got money left in the bank to spend in terms of a transfer budget. But as you can see, we're still on negative numbers. And I do think a lot of it is to do with this transfer debt. And obviously, we've not really helped that. So I do think in the summer, we are going to have to be ruthless with this squad. We might have to move a player or two on. Buendia is wanted. I would rather not lose him. But if we have to do it, we have to do it. Tyro Mings is wanted. Matty Cash is wanted. 
There might be a few more wanted as the season goes on as well. We might have to let a few players go. I've got in my head who I would like to let go. I've, I'd ideally not like to let anyone go because I think we've got the makings of a really good squad here. Diego Carlos has been fantastic, by the way. Um, I'll talk about players who haven't done very well when we actually get into the game. But as you can see, the table is looking like this. Sixth place at the moment. That'll do for me. If we finish in that top seven, I'll be delighted. If we finish outside of it, I'll be okay as long as we're top half. But obviously, financially, I would like to be into Europe. If I'm being completely honest with you. Um, Chelsea, as I mentioned before, having a shocking season. As are United. Um, and, I mean, Leeds United in second place at this point in the season. They're having an absolute madness. And Erling Haaland as a false nine, obviously working very well. But enough about all that nonsense. It's time to play West Ham United. And this is the 11 we're going to be using to hopefully get three points at the London Stadium. It's Martinez in goal. Cash, Mings, Diego Carlos and Augustinson in defence. Douglas Luiz and Kamara in the midfield with Brendia, Coutinho and Watkins supporting Ings up front. Danny Ings has dried off a little bit. As you can see, poor game last time out. But he's had a couple of games here and there where he has been pretty good. He did have a run where he was particularly awful. But he has started to look better again. In this system, he has been working. But I'm not completely sold on it yet. But I do think in the summer, we will completely convert to this system. The diamond is not dead. But... I like playing with wingers, I'll be honest with you. I do like playing with wingers. Um, Lucas Digne missing out because he got a red card in the last game. And Esri Konsa technically would be fit tomorrow, which is a little bit frustrating. But that's the 11. There's the bench. Let's see whether we can get three points against West Ham United. Let's go. And I've already mentioned how happy I am that we've got Sander Burge. The only reason he's not starting today is because we need to get some fitness into Kamara. He missed a few games due to injury. I would just want to get him some more game time. Um... John McGinn's been a weird one. He's had one or two good games, but he's still struggling for form. I've tried him in so many different positions. Um, sorry, so many different roles. I've kept him as a central midfielder, obviously, but I'm just struggling to find one that clicks. Deep line playmaker was looking like the one, but to be honest with you, it hasn't worked anywhere near as well as I was hoping it would. He's had one or two good games, and the rest have been pretty dross, if I'm being completely honest with you. So it's ridiculous to say... But I was mentioning players we might have to sell in the summer. I'd consider selling John McGinn if someone came in for him. And Ben Rama's in here and we've conceded early on. And that is shocking from our defence. Absolutely shocking. Ah, uh, uh, We've just let them pass it around us there. And I'm starting to get a little bit concerned because that was a trend in the last game. The last game against Crystal Palace, they just passed the ball around us and we were a little bit anonymous. And... That's kind of how that felt there. I'm going to I'm going to demand more immediately. It's early to demand more, but that was not good. That was not good at all. Um, Ollie Watkins as well. I was hoping he would be a really good force down that left hand side. All oh, the game, not liking that. Um, and we're just we're just some of the passes are not good as well. Like we've dropped the tempo. We're trying to pass it short. We're trying to play nice football, but at times it just looks like we don't really know what we're doing. And Ollie Watkins has actually, as soon as I'm slating him, got an equaliser. Go on, Ollie. Show me I'm wrong. Very happy with that. And it's a great cross from Matty Cash. And Matty Cash was going to be my next victim in terms of saying players who haven't played very well. And he's not been that great recently, to be honest, Matty Cash. And the problem is, we've got Ashley Young as backup. Ashley Young, realistically, has had his best games when we've played the 4-2 four, four diamonds with the, ex like, the wing-backs extended forward. I couldn't think of the words then. When we've, had, we've played with wing-backs as opposed to full-backs, if that makes sense. Um, as a normal full back playing as a wing back it doesn't really work for Ashley Young but when he's playing a bit further forward he does a really good job so it's difficult it's definitely the area of the team we need to invest in not necessarily the most but it's one of the areas we need to invest in next season so we'll have to consider that and Brendia just won a header against Thomas Suchek that's ridiculous Brendia is like five foot nothing and Thomas Suchek is well into his six foot I don't understand that at all. Um, we've done really well to come back into this game, by the way. We're the leading on shots. XG is definitely West Ham's domain at the moment. We're doing pretty well. I am a little bit worried about the potential of us conceding a second goal before half-time. Declan Rice going on a mad run here, which is great because he's leaving a hole in the defence. But we need to get the ball to be able to make something of it. I thought Kerno was going to score then. It did not. And it is going to be a West Ham corner. They have got some big lads in the squad, which is obviously a bit of a concern. So if we can head this out, boys... I would be very happy. Cresswell whips in. Looking for Florian Grilic, who heads it over. Grilic, of course, we do know from... I think we had him at Palmer. Um, or did we have him at West Ham? Oh, I can't remember. I think we had him at Palmer for a season. He did all right for us. Right. We'll say that one. Did absolutely nothing. Great stuff, guys. Well done. Lovely to see the motivation there. Right. Um, tactics. Do we change anything? I'm actually... I'm actually genuinely thinking we go back to the Diamonds. I know I've been talking up the fact that that system worked well against Chelsea, but 
in all honesty, he did do well against Chelsea, but that's not enough for me to keep it, to be honest with you. I think we're going to go back to this. Go a little bit wider. We're going to raise the line up a little bit. We'll press them a little bit more. We're going to go narrow. And we're going to continue distributing to centre-backs. It's a big call, but I do. I think we've tried it. I think because we've trained with the diamond as a system that we could use from the beginning of the season, I think the diamond is probably going to be the one we're most used to. We'll demand them all from the players. We'll give it a go and we'll see what happens. It might be the wrong thing to do. I might have just cost us the game. And oh, Thomas, Thomas Suchek just took the ball off of Douglas Louise and took his lunch money as well. And Cornet is in here. He's going to square it across. Actually, doesn't he? Actually, goes for the goal. And that's what ends up costing him the chance to get a goal. Ben Rama has played really well. Bowen has not. But I'm just thinking, going narrow, it does allow us to keep them on the outside where they're not going to be as dangerous. However, it does. we do have to say, we've been pretty poor since we made the tactical change. And I think we need to make a few more. So here's what's going to happen. We haven't got it saved as a preset anymore. But we are going to go to the attacking version. We're going to put those guys further forward. We're also going to bring... I think we, Do we bring Berge on? I think we do. No, actually, Kamara's had a better game. But we are going to be in Bergen anyway, actually. Going to come into the midfield. Coutinho's had an absolute shocker of a game. He's going to come off for Jacob Ramsey. We're going to also take off Danny Ings. Leon Bailey's going to come on, and we'll swap these two rounds. Uh, in fact, no, Leon Bailey apparently wants to be the advanced forward. All right, I'm okay with that. Uh, we could take Augustusson off, and we could bring on Ashley Young. We could do that. Is that match? I mean, I said he plays well as a... As a full-on wing back so i think it probably makes sense to do it to be honest with you i think we'll do that we're gonna go attacking as well we need to start making them concerned about us and we're not doing that at the moment so we're gonna up the tempo and we're gonna try and hit early crosses in behind let's see whether that'll do anything we've got one more substitute to play with if we need to let's just see whether we can put them under some pressure towards the end of the game a draw against west ham united is not a bad result to be fair they're a good squad they're a good team in real life it's a very challenging fixture even though west ham united have had their troubles this season and we've almost immediately conceded west ham have been so much better than us in this game so much better and it is a concern it is a massive concern and I think we're going to be lucky to get away with a draw here. I mean, we are away from home, so let's not forget that. Unless Leon Bailey... For a second, then. For a second, then. I was thinking, if Leon Bailey can get us a goal from a corner, that would be incredible. Right, Mings, Jacob Ramsey. Leon Bailey's in. Oh, he's let the ball run. He's let the ball run. And Fornals is now on it. Fornals is a player I was looking at, by the way. To try and get in, just because he is a fantastic playmaker. Matt Cash has just got himself sent off. Oh, Matty. Why? Why have you done that? Why have you done... See, this is why I kept a substitution. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. Right, Callum Chambers is on. We've had to take off uh, Eddie Emmy Wendy. Uh, I'd rather have kept him on just for the attacking ability. But what we're going to do is going to make Jacob Ramsey uh, play a bit further forward as a Mazala. And, I mean, there's nothing else we can do. There's literally nothing else we can do. We'll just see the game out now and see whether we can get away with it. If we can stay... At 1-1, one, one, with 10 men, I will be delighted. Fornals heads it in. Mings clears it. Looking for Jacob Ramsey. Jacob Ramsey actually bails out there, which is really frustrating. And they're going to get a late throw-in. A very late throw-in. Oh, my words. I am so frustrated with Matty Cash. And again, Matty Cash is one of those players who's just been really... Oh! No! No! Not like this! Oh! Martinez hasn't recovered from the save he made. And he gets caught out by Jared Bowen. Grilich gets it in. For now, has all the time in the world. The block is there. And again, Martinez, he's just unsighted and there's nothing he can do. He's recovering from that first save. He can't really see it until late. And all of a sudden, West Ham United have a win. I mean, they deserve it. They've been the better team. And I'm livid with the players. I'm absolutely livid with them. And that run I was on about of the... the well, I talk about it in other saves. The bubble bursting, if you have a good start. I think that signifies it well and truly bursting. And again, West Ham United are in and around where we are. They've got a squad that's comparable to ours. But, oh my words, that was concerning. That was very concerning. I'm livid. I'm absolutely... I'm livid, not because... 
they deserved it, absolutely. I'm livid because we've just dropped off so much. And I know we bailed out of this formation, but this formation didn't look good. So, <sighs> maybe we go back to this. We might go back to this, you know. I feel like it's almost too defensive, but we need to do something. So, maybe just maybe we do end up going with this. That's just think a bit different, but we need to do something because that performance was not good enough, quite frankly. Right. We've got the next match against Wolves coming up, as in local rivals, Derby Wolves, after two straight losses where we've really not looked that good. I'm sure it'll be fine. We are back ready for the Wolves game. We've got a couple of issues, though. Uh, Lucas Digne's suspension was actually more than just one game, so he is still suspended. Obviously, Matty Cash is suspended, also injured, which is not ideal. And even less ideal is an injury to Danny Ings. So, at the moment, we are... Having to deal with a few issues. So Tyrone Minx is currently our left back because Augustinson was really bad in the last game. And to be honest with you, I told him he was bad. He didn't really like me telling him he was bad. You know I don't like mouthy players. He's dropped from the first team. So he's going to be on the bench. We need someone on the bench. So he's going to be there. So Tyrone Minx is going to start a left back. So the 11 is as follows. It's Martinez in goal. Young, Concert, Carlos and Mings in defence. Burge, Coutinho and McGinn in the midfield with Brendia, Palmer and Watkins uh, up front as the attacking trio. We have gone to the 4-3-3 with a holding midfielder. I feel a bit more comfortable at the moment having a holding midfielder there. We've also upped our tempo and our passing a little bit. We've taken off being expressive as well. We're just going to see if we can do a few things just to try and stop the rot a little bit. So we're going to try and do things a little bit differently and see whether it works. I don't know whether it will. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Um, we've also got John McGinn playing as a playmaker because, again, he has shown a bit of promise in that position. As you can see, he has dropped down to two and a half stars, though, which is not ideal. Uh, we do have Cole Palmer starting, so we'll see how he can do. Leon Bailey is the obvious one to start in that role. The problem is his best position is as a winger, and I would like someone cutting in rather than having two wingers. So that's the reason why that's not happening. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Let's get to the game. Let's see whether we can beat Wolves and get this season back on track, shall we? Let's go. Three losses in our last five is not a good look, if we're being completely honest. So let's do something about that today, boys. Let's get out there and let's try and get a win. I don't know whether we will be able to do that, but Wolves are behind us in the table. So in theory, we are the better team. And Wolves are the ones who are flying forward looking to get a goal, which is obviously not what we want. Not in the slightest. They are passing the ball around quite nicely at the moment, and it is very frustrating. I mean, we are using a tactic that we haven't used since the beginning of the season, and they nearly score very early on, which is a bit concerning. Um, we obviously started the season using a variant of the 4-3-3 with the left winger actually playing as a second striker just off the, off the main striker. So we do have to remember that because we haven't used it for so long, it might not actually be as fluid as we wanted it to be. Although Emi Wendir has just gone and won the ball there. He's got it into Watkins, and Ollie Watkins makes it 1-0, but there is questions over whether it's offside. My instinct... If I'm being completely honest with you, is that it is offside? Yeah, I had a feeling. I didn't want to get too excited there. It's a great ball from Buendia, but it did just look like it was... Yeah, he's, he's offside by quite a bit, isn't he? That's a bit frustrating. But good intense from the boys. We have shown that there is life in us, so we just need to do a little bit more. I mean, Wolves have been the team so far. They are bombing forward at every opportunity. Which is obviously not ideal, not in the slightest. Burge now, over to Diego Carlos. Carlos, get it over to Mings. Mings playing at left back today. Over to Cole Palmer, into McGinn. McGinn now, with time on the ball. Gets it to Carlos, back to Sander Burge. Burge to Concer, we're just passing it around nicely. That's okay, we don't need to rush it too much. Get it out wide to Palmer. Palmer now, looking to cut inside. He does cut inside. His strongest foot is his left foot. He goes for the shot, it was the wrong decision. His strongest foot is his left foot. So it's a very similar situation to the one with Leon Bailey, but we've decided to go with him today. The other option, of course, was Jeremy Bogger. Bogger's not been in good form recently, so I don't quite trust him yet. And for some reason, Buendia bails out of the sprint and he lets Neto get onto it. And I will use that word very deliberately. He let Neto get onto that. And all of a sudden, we have so much trouble in our box as a result of it. Buendia really should not be doing that. Oh, I'm frustrated with this team at the moment. We don't look like we can play football. And it's flicked on. Palmer's there. Palmer heads it over. We have two fantastic chances in this half to go ahead. And we do not take them. We do not take them whatsoever. Otto now, looking for options. Buendia tries to press him, doesn't really do a good job. Goes back to Burley, all the way to Jose Saar. We're pressing Saar, but he just passed it out to the defence. We are trying to press them, but 
they're just all over us at the moment. I mean, they're just absolutely swamping us in the wide areas, and we're cutting, we're trying to cut them inside. It's not working. Watkins now does get the ball, though, because for some reason, our goal is living a charmed life, and nothing can go inside it at the moment. Palmer now, down to McGinn. McGinn into Sander Burge. Burge looking for options. All the way back to Carlos. Back to Burge. Into Buendia. Buendia out on the wing. And I will say, he's doing well out there. Oh, Coutinho goes for the world. He doesn't quite get there. Young now, just dwelling on the ball. But he manages to keep possession. Gets it back to Burge. Back to concert and the highlight ends. I forgot the point I was going to make because I'm so frustrated with the team at the moment. So frustrated with the team. And we go in, nil-nil. I'm going to say I'm far from pleased because really, it has not been good enough. It really has not been good enough. And I don't really know what to do, if I'm being honest with you. I'm genuinely serious. I don't know what to do. Buendia, I know, do you know what? Here's what we're going to do. And this is a bit mad, but we are going to go back to this. Even though I've said a couple of times it's not working, but what we're going to do is we're going to drop Burge back. Burge, I think, will do a good job sweeping the defence around here, and I think it's good to have him there. John McGinn's not had a good start, but we are going to change him to box to box. And then the last thing we're going to do is go put Coutinho as the playmaker. We're going to do that. But actually, we're going to put him on support. So we can drop back a little bit, get the ball and come forwards. We're going to see whether that works. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But we need to do something because right now it's not working. We're going to do that and we're going to see what happens. I think as well, we're going to keep these as they are. We're going to take that off. I want to try and get the ball and keep it a little bit more. And also, I mean, we're distributing to our fullbacks. We're definitely not doing that. Add to the centre-backs, please, boys. And then we're pressing up as far forward as we can. And then we're going to go narrow. Just try and force everything out wide. That's what we're going to do. We're going to see if it works. And if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But we're going to demand more from the boys. Because that first half was not good enough, in my opinion. It was not good enough in the slightest. I mean, we're still not solving the problem with Buendia. Because he's currently out on the wing. He's good on the wing. But I do feel like he's most effective when he's in the middle. So, for now, we're going to stick where we are. But Buendia might cut inside at some point into the attacking midfield role. Uh, Buendia can't get on the end of that because the pass is poor. And all of a sudden, we give Wolves the ball back. Which is not really what we should be doing. Not in the slightest. Then Donka now, who, of course, is at Villa in real life now. Uh, but that transfer went through after I'd started playing. Otto, looking to cross the ball in. I mean... I've got us playing narrow defensively. Maybe we should be playing a bit wider to try and stop that kind of ball from happening. But if they're going to have shots like that, I'm not too worried about it. We are going attacking as well. I'm going to make that decision now. We need to be doing something to get players further forward. Um, I'm also going to make the decision. John McGinn is coming off. He's had a woeful, woeful game. Wendy is coming in the middle. We're going to put him back to attacking midfield. We know he can do well there. We're also going to bring on... Um, do we bring Jeremy? Let's give Berger a chance. We need to give him a chance because... We just keep not trying him. Nothing's ever going to happen with him. So we're going to bring him on and see what happens. We'll leave everything as is other than that. And we'll see whether that can get us anything. But I do feel like we've had a bit more stability in the second half so far. But that might just be me. I am going to quickly just tell Burst to calm down. Coutinho was looking for Arlie Watkins. But Neto now looking for the counter-attack. He's got players around him. None of the players are... None of the players making a tackle. Really frustrating. Mings does really well to cut that out, though. And we do now have a chance to counter-attack. But we are instead slowing the pace down. I don't mind that necessarily. Gets our players in position. Uh, Palmer now looking for Watkins. Watkins beats his man. Ollie Watkins is in. Can he get a goal? He's gone very narrow. And he's managed to squeeze it in. Just about. Oh, that was tight. But he has scored. And it is 1-0 to Aston Villa in the derby against Wolves. I feel like I can breathe a little bit now. It's not over yet. But Ollie Watkins gets in. He goes around the keeper. He gives himself a very tight angle. And he looks like it actually grazes the bar on the way through. But it does go over the line. And we do go ahead in the tie. It is Villa 1, Wolves 0. We maintain our sixth place position. I think we would have anyway, to be honest with you. But we want to keep up more of that if we're being completely honest with you. We're going to make a bunch more substitutions in a minute just to freshen the team up. Because our fullbacks have had an absolute nightmare today. An absolute nightmare. And Bogger just let that happen. He didn't even attempt to chase it there, which is a bit frustrating. I need to see something from him to justify the couple of million pounds we spent on him. Yes, it's only a couple of million pounds, but we've not seen a lot from him so far. It's a bit disappointing. That is a ball, though. And Ollie Watkins could be making it too. He's put it wide. Oh, he's put it wide. Ah. Why? Ah. What a chance for two. I mean, he could have had a hat-trick today. He could have had a hat-trick. Right. Substitute o'clock. 
Ming has had a bad one. Augustinson can come off. Ashley Young has not had the best one. Chambers can come on. We've got two changes left, I do believe. Uh, Sandra Burge will bring off just because he's on a yellow card. We'll bring on Kamara. And then I think we'll take off Wendia. And we're going to bring on Douglas Louise in the midfield. He can play in that box-to-box -box midfield role. He can do a good job there. Tell you what we will do as well. We're going to change Kamara back to a halfback, and Douglas Louise is going to turn into a ball winning midfielder on support. Just give us a little bit more bite in the midfield. I'm actually going to put these guys onto support as well. Just want them dropping back a little bit just to help these guys out because these guys I think are struggling a little bit, and that will be all of our changes. And hopefully, that will do. Hopefully, that'll do. One thing I will do actually as well, while I just remember it, we are going to do that as well. Let's just have us attacking wide a little bit, just making sure that. The wide guys out here know what they're doing. They've actually gone to a back four to try and quell everything. They've got Martinho playing as an attacking midfielder, which is a bold choice. Is it too little too late? Right, it's whipped in. Palmer actually did really smart there to drop off. Gets it to Boga. Boga, oh, he plays it back to Kamara. And Kamara goes all the way back to Diego Carlos. But can we recycle this and turn it into something? We've got to go all the way back to Martinez, which is a bit of a concern. But we do get away with it. Right, Conza now. Into Louise. Back to Conza. Not sure the little cheeky back heel pass from Douglas Louise was necessary. But it's fine. I can live with it. Jeremy Boga now. Getting on the end of it. Can he get the ball to someone? Gets it to Kamara. Kamara whips in. Looking for Palmer. Palmer crashes against the cross bar and cannot get his goal for the club. He's already scored once for us, but he couldn't get another one there. Oh, and our passing just breaks down and they get it to Raul Jimenez. Out to Podence. And now, Wolverhampton Wanderers in the final minute are on the counter-attack. Come on, boys. Get the ball off of them. Let's not let this slip. Let's not do it. Kamara heads it wide. Not even wide. He heads it clear. And Bogger now leading a bit of a counter-attack for Villa. Augustinson, big ball. He's looking for Cole Palmer. Can't quite find him. And it goes back to the Wolves' defence. And they now launch it back forward. But Conza gets on the end of it. And I think we're in the home stretch here. We've got possession. We just need to not mess this up. Chambers now into Palmer. Palmer looking for Watkins. Can't find it. It ends up with Jose Sarr. There's seconds remaining. That has got to be the game, surely. It is the game. And we get the three points. Oh, my word. It was a smash and grab job. You could argue we deserved it in some respects, but they had some great chances that just did not go in for them. In particular, Guedes. How many chances did we see him have? Him and has had opportunities, but we get away with it and somehow we win. I mean, I'm going to say that one. I'm not happy with the performance. I'm not entirely sure whether that formation is the one to go with, but... There's a lot for us to think about. And certainly when we get to the summer, there'll be a lot for us to think about there. But we do win the game. And that puts us up to fifth, actually, which is a bit of a surprise. We are in fifth. 51 points. West Ham United just ahead of us. Obviously, they're the team that beat us earlier in the episode. It's one of them. We're doing all right. We have to remember that first half of the season was very much an anomaly. So we've done all the hard work to get us here. Now we just need to do what we can to maintain what we've got but i don't know about you i'm bloody exhausted <laughs> okay we are going to be back i think let's let's return for <laughs> how's this for fun liverpool and one of the games here maybe fulham maybe not man city because we already played them liverpool and fulham we'll come back for liverpool and fulham that feels like the best plan to me so we'll play through the next three games come back for the game at anfield do the Fulham game, and then in the final episode, we'll play the final two games of the season, and we'll see where we end up. That sounds like a good plan to me. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed again, please do leave a like on the video, and hit that subscribe button so you never miss any lovely FM content from the channel. I've been Stubo, you guys have been awesome, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.